A few years ago, I entered the University of Lausanne to start my medical studies. I had just arrived in the city and even the country. I was very excited to start my year, to discover the university and to meet new people. Everything was going great until the end of the third week. Friday night around 9pm, I leave the library, say goodbye to my friends and start to go home. The pace of work was already very intense though we had been working all day and I was in a rush to get home. It was my favorite part of the day because I could put on my music, take the subway and then the train in and it gives me a chance to rest and unwind. Anyway, that night it was cold so there was no one left outside. It takes me about 7 minutes to walk from the library to the subway. I'm walking quietly with my music in my ears when all of a sudden, I get a shiver that runs through my body from head to toe. I start to feel uncomfortable, as if someone was watching me, and at that point, I pause my music and decide to not turn around to check in case the person is trying to be really inconspicuous and if I notice them, something might happen. I don't want to run either because I'm not sure if I can run faster and I don't know where to go. At this point, we pass a glass building, so I decide to look inside and pretend that I'm fixing my hair. I quickly glance in the corner of my eye and my blood runs cold. There is definitely someone walking a few feet behind me in a hoodie. I try to reassure myself that he had just finished work and that he's going home. That he's cold and that's why he's wearing his hoodie. But I didn't see a backpack and there are no houses for civilians around. I decide to send a message to my mother saying, Come and get me in front of the building. Please, I really don't feel it. It is important to know that the university is about 30 minutes by car from my house. At this moment, I don't find any other solution than taking refuge in a building while waiting for my mother to come and get me. As I was about to go back, I opened the door, took off my helmet, and went down these stairs to find a hiding place, but we had entered by the third floor. I thought that I was out of trouble when suddenly, I hear the door that I came in through open up. This time, I am sure that he's after me, but since I'm new, I didn't know this building and where it led to. I run downstairs at full speed and I hear behind me the footsteps of this guy running down the stairs at full speed as well. I run without looking, being sure that he is running faster than me and that he'll catch up with me. I don't even know where I'm going but I pray that I don't fall into a dead end. Looking back, I even think that it was really like in The Shining with the labyrinth scene. I didn't know how far ahead of him I was. So, I opened a window in the hallway to make it look like I was out of there, and I opened the door a little further. It was a huge auditorium in the dark. I went down the stairs and head under a desk in the middle, and I put my phone on silent. My mom had been texting me a lot asking me what was going on, and saying that she was on her way with my dad. I texted her, I am in the name of this building. And he's looking for me, please, come quickly. I hid under that desk, thinking that I was screwed. My hiding place sucked and he was going to find me any second. But then I heard a thud and a huge scream. And I don't think I've ever been so scared in my life as when I heard that scream. For 15 minutes, my mother was sending me messages, telling me to hang on. And at the end of those 15 long minutes waiting for him to find me, I finally got the message from my mom where she says that she is here with the police, that they're going to enter the building and that they need to know where I am. I just tell them that I'm on the second floor because I had no idea what room I was in or which way I was going. After two minutes, I hear the door of the auditorium and it was the police that came to get me. Once I got out, they took my statement and said that they would check with the university management. The next day, they contacted us, 
and said that they saw on these surveillance cameras that there was indeed someone who had followed me when I had entered the building, but there were no cameras inside. You can't see the guy's face, and therefore, you don't know who it is. They just said that security was going to do patrols at night, and advised me to have someone with me when I went out at that time. We never heard about it again, and that's good. As I'm writing this, it's been a few hours since this has happened to me and my friends, but I'm still a bit shaken up, but hopefully writing this up will help me calm down a bit. For a bit of background, I am currently 19 and live in Canada. Being a young male with long hair and some discernibly native features, I've grown used to the occasional needlessly hostile cop or security guard. Just a part of life. However, most of the time those encounters don't escalate very far, and have always happened in some other part of the city, so I never thought something like this would happen. It was a little after 1am and I was hanging out with two of my friends, Joey and Rag. We were hanging out at my house initially, however, my parents had gone to bed and we didn't want to wake them up so we decided to go out for a drive. We ended up going out to our old high school and chilled in the parking lot while listening to music. It's a relatively safe and well-lit area, so we didn't reckon anything bad would happen. While there, we joined a Discord call with some of our friends who were out of town for university, having a good time when I noticed a big white pickup truck pull into the parking lot. Right off the bat, I knew that something was wrong. Most of the people that come into these parking lots to hang out are all around our age and not many teenagers drive a truck this nice and big. I tap Joey on the shoulder and tell him that we should leave. Before he had time to react though, the truck pulls up right behind our car and it blocks us in. Inside was a relatively normal looking white guy. Maybe about 30 with some stubble and a Hurley hat on. We see him roll down his window and gesture for us to roll ours down. Not knowing what else to do, Joey complied. The guy then pulled up on our driver's side and identified himself as a cop who just had finished his shift and wanted to know what we were doing out this late. Joey explained that we were just hanging out, listening to music. The guy nodded and said that he just wanted to make sure we weren't doing anything bad and then he drove off. After that, all things went back to normal. We didn't think much of it, and we were relieved that it wasn't anything worse. Joey joined the Discord call again, and all was normal. And then maybe ten minutes later, I realized this guy has been driving back and forth down the street near the parking lot watching us. Suddenly, he comes flying into the parking lot, turning on his high beams as he slams on the brakes maybe two stalls away from where we were parked on our driver's side. Afterwards, he proceeded to park at an angle, partially blocking us in, and then rolling down his window, visibly very angry as he started yelling at us. My initial reaction was to start filming, but unfortunately, my phone had died a few minutes prior. Never let your phone go below 10% while in public. If something happens, you'll be glad to have it on you. So Joey rolls down his window, and as he does, we hear the guy yell, You guys have to leave. Get the heck out of here right now. Joey nods and says something along the lines of, All good. Can I see your badge? The man exhaled loudly before reaching down and pulling out his badge, and a gun which was pointed right at Joey. Thankfully, he set both items down right after but it was clearly another very blatant attempt at intimidation. In hindsight, we probably should have asked for his badge number, but the sight of a firearm had us frozen. After this, he went back in his tirade, yelling something along the lines of, Get the heck out of here before I call my on-duty friends to come mess you guys up. So we tell him that we'll leave. Before he goes flying off, he yells something along the lines of, Don't be dummies. Quit doing crappy things like this. Needless to say, we ended up leaving after that. We just ended up going back to Joey's house and cooling off a bit before he drove me and Rick home. This is the first time that I've had an incident with a cop or security guard, 
where I really felt that I was in danger. It's also worth noting that unless otherwise posted, this parking lot is designated as free for public use outside of school hours, and we didn't have the music on very loud either, so we had no real reason to ask us to leave in the first place. I'm unsure of whether or not I'll be filing a complaint. I would very much like to do one both to get even and ensure that he's unable to do something like this again. However, there is no anonymous way to file a complaint on an officer in my city. And I know that a complaint could escalate the situation into some god-awful legal case and it may be best for me to simply take the lesson from this situation and to move on. I was returning home from an afternoon of shooting my new shotgun that I just bought. I stopped to get some dinner at Wingstop and parked in a parking lot right in front of the store that had an all-glass front and looked directly into the parking lot, not more than 20 yards away where you could see my vehicle. Seemed pretty safe, right? Not thinking anything of it, I left my shotgun in the back in its case where it was visible. You could not see the firearm itself, though but you could certainly see that it was a rifle of some kind due to the shape of the bag and also I had a duffel bag next to it. Anyways, I go in and eat some dinner, have a couple of beers and I'm pretty content. I walk outside and I see this sketchy dude in the parking lot just kind of walking around, specifically around my vehicle, kind of looking around, just a general sketchy body language and I immediately got a bad feeling. It was kind of a poorer area of town and there were some weird people in this little city that I'm in. So I just put my paranoia to the back of my mind and think that maybe this guy is going to ask me for money or something. As I approach my vehicle, he sort of turns around and walks off a bit, but still close to my car. Still not thinking much of it, I keep alert just in case. I step inside my vehicle and put the key in the ignition and I turn it on. All the while, I see this guy out of my peripheral standing at my passenger window. And I think that it's pretty weird that he's still standing there. And I'm thinking that he's going to tap on my window to ask me for money or for a ride. Nope. This guy opens my car door as soon as I put it in drive. I didn't want to wait to find out what he was doing or what he had wanted. I peeled out of the parking lot like a bat out of hell, door opened and all. Someone honking at me not knowing some freaking creep tried getting into my vehicle to do god knows what. I called the police and gave a description of the suspect along with the location. I'm pretty sure that guy was going around looking in cars and saw what I had in my back seat and noticed my gun. And when he couldn't get in because it was locked, figured that he would wait around for me to return and hold me up. Thank God I had locked the door otherwise my firearm would have been stolen and used in who knows what kind of crime and it could have came back on me. I learned a couple of lessons from this. Do not leave anything valuable visible inside your car even if you think that it's totally safe because it's a public place with a lot of visibility. Also, don't leave firearms in your car besides a glove box that is locked. I was seriously an idiot for leaving it out of the open in the case like that. I just didn't think about it in that way until tonight. Next, follow your gut. I knew something was up as soon as I saw this guy. If I would have completely written it off as just some weirdo, who knows if I would have had the awareness and instinct to immediately take off. Lock your doors as soon as you get in. This occurred to me when I entered my car that I really ought to have locked them. For some reason, I didn't though. Maybe I really didn't think someone would make an attempt like that. Or I don't know why I didn't. But that little mistake could have turned into a big one really quick. Get a concealed carry permit. This is as close a call as I need to be convinced that, that I need a permit. And classes on how to use pistols effectively and safely for your self-defense. Not taking any chances. Ladies, please be careful. Creeps like this are more inclined to prey on women. And I know this guy was probably hoping a poor defenseless young lady would have stepped into that car. 
I thought he looked frustrated when I walked out and he saw me walking towards my car. All in all, be careful out there. This is my second posting that happened after the bus incident. I actually bought a car right after the bus incident. I had a car loan to pay off, but I was so shook up after that that I decided it was worth it. Unfortunately, I'm an idiot and decided one night in the middle of the night that I needed to grab something from Walmart. I don't remember what time, and at this point, I don't even remember what I even went in to get, but... I do remember that I was getting out of my car, and I saw a rusted vehicle pull up to the front of the building. The larger person in the driver's seat kind of shoved some skinny disheveled looking late teen to early 20 year old out of the car and was kind of aggressively ordering him to do something and drove off. I also saw the teenager look at me and I closed my door and scurried into the store. I had kind of a do not involve me mentality. I didn't know what they were doing, I just didn't want to be involved. This only lasted for a few minutes. I had immediately gone into the women's clothing section because I wanted to be further away from the entrance when he came in. But dang if that obvious drug addict didn't immediately run up to me. I can be naive, but not completely sheltered. As soon as he opened his mouth, I knew he was going to ask me for money. And money is a pet peeve of mine. I work hard and I make very little money. I was lifting boxes of product, assembling furniture, having to take a bus with crazy people. Before I had a car and if I missed that bus, I would have to walk miles to get home. I realized at this point that the person who dropped him off ordered him to get money some way or another and I was annoyed. I could see him preparing himself to try and look pitiful and opening his eyes wide to look innocent. I guess he didn't understand how insincere he looked right off the bat and was like, Ma'am, can I ask you? No. I immediately cut him off. I didn't want to hear whatever lie he was about to tell me. He tried a few more times, got mad and stalked off, pissed at me. He found the lady working in the changing rooms and I could hear him talking to her in the same insincere tone, complaining about me to gain some sympathy. Ma'am, you won't believe how rude this. She cut him off and I heard her call out on the radio very loudly. Security, come get this guy out of here. I heard him pleading with her and her yelling at him for a minute and security came to escort him out. It was funny at that moment and I thought that it was over. I went about my business and checked out and I was about to step out when I suddenly had a thought. The guy's mad at me and he know where I parked and his ride drove over, leaving me there. So that guy is still out there. There were only four cars in the parking lot, mine with two cars next to it and one a row after mine. I thought that I was overreacting, but I felt like it was a bad idea to go out there alone. I stood there for a few minutes contemplating getting security to walk me out when I heard someone getting checked out, and I liked to see that it was a very well put together tall man who seemed nice. So I waited and asked him to walk me to my car. He was from the car the row after mine. He didn't mind at all, so I walked with him to my car, locked the door, and he walked to his. I really thought that I had overreacted. I thought that I was being paranoid. Until I pulled out and drove past those two cars next to me to leave, and I saw the young man uncrouch from between the two cars next to mine and walk off. I stopped going out alone after that night, and I started keeping my pepper spray in my hands in parking lots if I did. I'm a senior in high school, and it was a Friday night around 6 p.m., and I had just gotten out of my drama class. As usual, my mom worried that anything could happen at such an hour, and then came with her car to fetch me. Sometimes on Friday, we would take this opportunity to go to the supermarket near my high school, and that's what we did tonight. Since my feet hurt after the whole two hours of drama class spent standing up, I stayed in the car. The other reason why I stayed in that car is that I would love to sing my songs when nobody was around, because I could shout and the sound was muffled. It was like I was in my own little personal space. 
By reflex, I locked all the car doors and waited for my mom to enter the shop to begin to sing some random stuff that I was into at the time. Some people will look at me, but that's okay. I don't really care anyway. And then I see a man, probably in his mid-fifties, wearing a big black coat and a gray beanie. He was watching me as he walked in front of my car. I look elsewhere, not really wanting to make eye contact. I just saw him smile at me when I looked away. I don't think much of it as he walks past my passenger door, the one side where I was sitting at. As I hear the sound of a car handle being pulled with force, my blood ran cold. It was the sound of the handle on my door, the passenger door. The man continued without looking behind. It dawned on me that the only reason that he couldn't open it was because I had locked everything up. What would have happened if I didn't? I don't know, but with the smile that creep sent to me, I believe that it wouldn't have been nice. Moral of the story, always lock your doors even if you stay in your car. It can happen to anyone to stumble upon a creep, even on a parking lot at 6pm with witnesses around.